Why do I read stuff like this? You know, that's a pretty good question. Why do I read stuff like this? This is horror, obviously. This is Shadows with Eyes, Six Tales of Crawling Horror by Fritz Leiber, the great author of horror and fantasy. So, when I see a cover like this, I want to read the book right away. Look how fantastic that is. So, horror, obviously. Why do I love horror so much? In science fiction. In fantasy. But I also have a taste for westerns. I like westerns an awful lot. You know, every once in a while I like a hard-boiled crime story or detective story as well. Where do those tastes come from? And why do I also like classics of literature so much? Like this one, Robert Louis Stevenson's Catriona, the sequel to Kidnapped, the one that not many people read for some reason. Why do I love this stuff? It's a question to ponder. And so it makes me think of my history as a reader. And how did I develop this kind of specific tastes in certain genres of fiction? It, it makes me wonder, because I think for those of us, and if you're watching BookTube or you're on BookTube, you're, you're a big time reader, probably, and you probably have your own specific tastes in the genres that you enjoy, the kind of thing that you really, really like to read, the stuff that really makes you interested, you know, like I am with this, you know, I see a cover like this, like I said, man, I just want to sit down and read that book right away. But where does that come from? For me, looking back to my life as a reader, it makes me wonder, am I just naturally inclined to like this kind of stuff? Or was it because I was exposed to so much of it as a young child? And I really was. My mother likes this kind of stuff. My stepfather liked that kind of stuff. So when I was growing up, that kind of stuff was kind of all around. And I read an awful lot of comic books growing up. That's for sure. I read a ton. I read a ton of comic books growing up. And I never stopped, to be honest. I've been reading comics since that time. But looking back to my specific taste, which for the most part runs to the literature of the fantastic as opposed to the literature of the mundane, and not to be too hard on, you know, just general, average, true-to-life kind of fiction, but very often... I kind of feel as if it's the literature of the mundane in that it takes place, just general fiction does, in kind of a realistic, real kind of world, dealing with, for the most part, realistic situations that you would encounter in your ordinary life, which very often I don't have a great interest in. Why is that? I do recall, as a small child growing up in the early and mid-70s, before I read a single line of text, before I knew how to read at all, I was watching quite a bit of television. And there was a lot of cool stuff on television back then. I'm thinking of a lot of old horror movies, like the old Universal horror movies that they played every weekend. So I was very familiar with characters like Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and most importantly, the Wolfman. The Wolfman, a character that I adored as a child. And I would watch the movies with the Wolfman in it, and I was just fascinated by this character who was complicated and didn't want to become a monster, but did. He couldn't help it. It was his horrific fate. And it was tragic and moving 
and terrifying all at the same time. And Star Trek was on TV literally always. I can't remember the first episode of Star Trek I watched because I was a baby watching it. Star Trek was on my whole life. And so I was exposed to all of that kind of stuff all the time. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. It fired my imagination in a way a lot of other fiction wouldn't. But at the same time as I grew up, I found myself also interested in a lot of classic literature. All that stuff that was reprinted by, in paperback by Bantam and Ballantyne and all of those old classics, which are so familiar to us now through Penguin editions and Oxford editions, you know, just the classic-y classics. I liked a lot of that stuff as well. And I, I wonder why. I think it might have been the kind of height, heightened drama that you'd find in that kind of story, the classics of literature tended to be very high drama stories. Uh, they were not stories, for the most part, at least the stuff that I was reading, that were just your average daily goings-on. Now, it's true, I wasn't reading a ton of Jane Austen as a kid, but the stuff that I did read, the classics of literature that I did read, tended to be pretty dramatic stuff. And growing up, I really enjoyed that stuff. But I think my taste was solidified when I came across three very specific writers. All pulpy writers, it, it has to be said. One of these writers, of course, was Edgar Rice Burroughs, who I discovered as a teenager. A young teenager, I'm talking like 13 years old. And... I loved this guy's science fiction and fantasy adventure stories. I've always loved Edgar Rice Burroughs, the creator of Tarzan and John Carter of Mars and the inner world of Pellucidar. All, all of this stuff I loved. So this is one of the writers which I became so fascinated by that I bought every single Edgar Rice Burroughs book I could find and pretty much have been doing that since then. And perhaps even more than Edgar Rice Burroughs, I became completely fascinated by Robert E. Howard. Of course, I discovered Robert E. Howard through the comic books, the Conan comic books, but eventually when I started reading the real stuff, this stuff was powerful and I loved it. It was fantasy with an edge, which I had not read quite up to this point in this way. And so Robert E. Howard, strong stuff. But what probably sealed the deal forever is H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft, a very unique writer who had a tremendous imagination, and he kind of fused all of the things that I was interested in in his writing. In his writing, you have fantasy stories, you have supernatural horror stories, and you have science fiction. Lovecraft famously said that he could never write about ordinary people because he has no interest in ordinary people. He doesn't find them interesting at all. He was interested in the extraordinary. He was interested in the fantastic. And his stuff really fired my imagination. I first read H.P. Lovecraft, I got a paperback copy of The Tomb, which I've, if I find the cover of it, I'll put it up here. Uh, I didn't quite get it when I first read Lovecraft, but there was something about his writing that I really, really loved. And then my stepfather bought this set. This is the Arkham House set. This is the edition that was corrected by S.T. Joshi in the 1980s. And so it was this set that I first read all of H.P. Lovecraft's work, and I did read it all. I just sat down with the first volume, and I just read every single story and novel in these books. I just read them all. Found them completely fascinating. And 
Through those kind of pulpy and horrific storytellers, I became really interested in more serious science fiction. And a lot of my reading tastes really solidified around that time, my preteen and teenage years. And, they, and it's never really changed that much. I did probably, what was it, in my late 20s, I became really interested in ancient history and really interested in the ancient historians. And so my reading tastes branched out. And I have read a lot of general fiction over the years. And so I've read all kinds of things. That is true. Uh, but unlike certain booktubers like Roy, who will read it, who on his channel, Roy Reads Anything, I probably am not the kind of guy who would read anything Really? I, I, I've said in the past that I would, and I have. But specifically, I do have these very specific tastes. I am interested in the fantastic, in the unusual, in worlds that do not exist. And all the genres that I'm interested in are very different genres. Science fiction is not horror. Science fiction is not fantasy. They can seem a lot, of, a lot alike, science fiction, horror, and fantasy. The big difference, of course, is that in science fiction, there's nothing supernatural. Magic does not exist in science fiction. You have to have rational reasons for things in science fiction, as fantastic as the stories might be. Might not be good reasons, but you have to at least try to have a non-supernatural explanation for the things that go on in science fiction. And that's one of the reasons H.P. Lovecraft was so interesting to me and why he was so formative in my, in my interest in that kind of thing is because he would, he started off writing fantasy and, and supernatural horror, but eventually he became more of a science fiction writer and he was still writing horror, but his horrors, as it turned out, weren't supernatural after all. We dumb humans, we just weren't advanced enough to figure out that it was all that they all had scientific ex explanations. All the horrific gods and monsters of his stories were usually aliens or mutants or something like that. But I still love supernatural horror as well. I love all of that stuff. And I find now, as a old senior citizen, I'm really interested in that stuff. I'm still interested in that stuff. Perhaps more so than I have been for the past several years. Something about the last few years have, has reignited my interest, specifically in those genres that I have mentioned. I've always been interested in that stuff, but I, I find myself now, as an old fella, even more interested in that stuff. Is it because I was exposed to so much of it as a kid? Or am I just odd that way? Who knows? And what about your own reading tastes? What kind of things are you interested in and why do you think you're interested in them? It's a question. Where do your reading tastes come from? It's a mystery, one that I can't answer for you, but it's certainly an interesting question to ask. I will shut up now. I've talked long enough. I will catch you next time.